Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. In the western end of Pennsylvania, we find ourselves at a location nearly 1,600 nautical miles away from where Juan Ponce de Leon landed in his search for the waters that would make the sick cured of all ills and the old become young for all eternity. In the early 12th century AD, around the time of 1120, a descendant of the three Magi, who was emperor of Ethiopia, King Prester John, claimed to have found a river of gold and eternal youth to which the rulers of Constantinople couldn't even afford. Going all the way back to 323 BC, Alexander the Great sought a similar river of healing that allegedly could also reverse age. But alas, nobody's ever found this proclaimed fountain of youth. That is, until today, right here, right now, I, Scott, on my odyssey, have finally found it just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the fountain of youth. See you in a minute. <music> Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. And if you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. Be sure to give this video a like, and more importantly, click the subscribe for more Odyssey stories of who we once were. Now, you may be asking yourself how I am so sure that I have found the Fountain of Youth. And well, it's really simple. It, it says so right on top of the entrance. Okay, so perhaps there is some hyperbole in this particular claim that this is the fountain of youth. But alas, I assure you this is a fountain of youth, at least in its naming. With its official history lost, we find ourselves in Allison Park, Pennsylvania, in what is known as the North Park, a public park 15 miles north of Pittsburgh, and part of Hampton, Pine, and McCandles Township. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. What we do know about this site is that the park itself was established in the mid to late 1930s by the Works Progress Administration, part of the American New Deal, a set of legislation that put forth the ability of the unemployed to become employed and make a basic wage post the Great Depression. One of the main aspects of the Works Progress Administration was the creation of work to improve public infrastructure from roads and highways to hospitals, schools, and, well, public parks. This specific site is known as the Fountain of Youth, a springhouse grotto or man-made cave enclosure that was created with a pump to a well that sprung forth the waters of eternal youth, or at least some cool well water that would have felt refreshing if you were out in the park and needed some hydration. The style of the grotto is unlike that of the Civilian Conservation Corps, which sought to make sure everything was built with and looked like it belonged in the natural environment from which it was taken and where it stood. This site was built in what is claimed to be a Greco-Roman style architecture that encloses the fountain. Personally, I would strongly disagree with that style naming because it's more than apparently a small stone stacking with a triangular arch embedded in a flat arch, which would actually make this what is called a Mayan miter arch. Let me know in the comments below what this architectural style is called. At one time, this may very well have been a terrifically refreshing and extremely Art Nouveau location, smelling of rich, wet earth and flowering gardens amidst a large, well-kept park. Unfortunately, that's not what we have here today. Built in 1938, we have today a basic rock-faced concrete wall and shallow shelter that is in fair condition with the smell of something is off, yet still wet earth and coupled with a non-functioning fountain that is full of water that I can assure you is not safe for public use to say the least. Although its grandeur is still apparent, yet in a more post-apocalyptic or archaic remnant of who we once were, this site is one of a story where they built it in 1938 and by 1953, just 15 years later, the well pump stopped working and was never repaired. 
Even previous to the death of the pump in 1953, there were newspaper reports of noise coming from the caves, such as is reported in the Pittsburgh press as squeaks and dry wheeze sounds. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories and locations such as the Fountain of Youth. My research is limited only by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history and culture of who we once were. The manually operated pump did have a pseudo replacement series of parts and with a good pumping action one could again gain some water from the fountain. But According to some water treatment chemists, it was determined that although the water was cold, pure, and clear, nothing was found in the water that could clear up wrinkles on one's body nor replace failing hair. So there you have it. The magic of the fountain was lost to time or perhaps overuse. Now the site still exists and you may be interested in obtaining some of this formerly magical water that brought forth the eternal youth you have always sought after in your older years. But unfortunately, just two years after the chemist tested these waters, there was another test performed that had more interesting results. It was tested and found to be highly contaminated with coliform organisms. This means it was pretty shitty water. No. Literally, in order for there to have been any testing of coliform organisms, there had to be significant amounts of mammalian fecal matter within the water because, well, that's where coliform bacteria is generated. So, the water was now technically poisonous and would most likely make you extremely sick if it didn't kill you. Perhaps the fountain is seeking to take back the life it gave like a recharging requirement, because we all know that any and all magic comes at an extreme price. This issue with the coliform in the water is nothing new for this area. It created delays in the development of their golf course, as well as their falsely attributed largest swimming pool in the United States. Although there's a claim to the North Park swimming pool being the largest swimming pool in the United States at 56,580 square feet back when it opened on July 6, 1937, holding 2.2 million gallons of water. This claim is absolutely false, as we will see when we visit the former site of the Ivyside Park concrete swimming pool in Altoona, Pennsylvania, which opened in 1924 and closed in 1945 due to the Great Depression which had a whopping 115,320 square feet and well over 5.4 million gallons of water and was officially the largest freshwater man-made swimming pool in the world. Back to the fountain. The water contamination in the area was so bad that there were even attribution to the death of their park buffalo due to the coliform in the creek that ran through the park. All right, let's get in there because I noticed some things and I want to show you guys what it actually looks like. Here's the outside entrance. Here's what it looks like on the inside. It's a dome. Assuming this is where the pump may have been. And then there's that. And that has a sound. Can you hear it? Can you hear that sound? That's another one. Can you hear that sound? And do you see what that is? It's a hole. You know what that means. I copped out on you last time, not this time. We're going in, into the hole. All right, here we go.
Don't stand up quick. on it. There's some living mosquitoes in here. But now you've been here. There it is, the fountain of youth. Now, here's some even more interesting facts about the fountain. Because there is no record of who actually put it into place, there are stories that tell of the fountain being a pump drawing from a natural spring. But there's information that says something even more interesting. It is believed that the fountain was actually not tapped into a spring at all. The water it was drawing from was actually a long-lasting leak of pooling water caused by a broken pipe used at the local golf course, which remained leaking for nearly 15 years until a total replacement of their watering system started in 1955. Around the same time, the fountain broke down and the water went poisonous. The location had been left to time and as they do, suffered extreme abandonment but was refaced as well as recrowned with a new concrete name crest in 2009. There is no longer a pump within its depth to draw out the water that would keep you young forever through the act of killing you at your current age. Now there is a spring that is close by that is still running, but there is no pump at the site for the fountain nor at the running spring and I for one would not be drinking any water flowing in an area such as this without a water filtration system at an extremely high end and perhaps a good boiling just for extra assurance. If nothing else, the site is an extremely interesting one to visit and it's just genuinely cool to be in the middle of a woods and find such a site to explore. The idea of the site was a grand gesture to something special to find in the middle of what seemed like nowhere, especially to those whom are coming from a large city or a suburb. If you haven't already, remember, click like on this video and subscribe for more Odyssey stories. Although the fountain may no longer flow with life rejuvenating waters, it most definitely flows with the imagination, hopes, and fantasies of such long forgotten adventures of who we once were. I hope you enjoyed this visit to the Fountain of Youth in Allison Park, Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.